So the other thing you can do here, another thing, is to go right over top that carpal tunnel tendon. Use your pointy part there because that tendon is a, a hard strap and you can loosen that up. It's not going to want to loosen up very much, but you can help loosen it up. And if you work on that hard, it's a good thing afterwards to ice it, to um, help get inflammation out of there, to help circulation, because ligaments have very little circulation at all. Other areas you can work on, the, the thumb areas, uh, these areas here where when you're gripping things, these muscles can get pretty tight. And in the last two core videos, I made a special videos on texting, and but it's also good if you're gripping pruning shears or scissors or whatever, because uh, these muscles, this part, you know, is not moved by the forearm. So you can get into uh, work on those. You can use the pointy part of your elbow. You can also sometimes use tools. Um, I'll show you that in the last two core videos too. Uh, I have this oblong round river rock. Uh, and they're easy to find. Just go down to a river and find, find one that fits your hand good and is nice and smooth. And you can uh, you can work on the edges of your fingers if you want. In between the fingers. It all depends on what kind of things you do with your hands. Because these muscles in between your fingers up here, these <laughs> move your fingers this way. This movement's not by the forearms, so these muscles can sometimes get tight depending on, you know, what kind of things you do. Work on the hands, middle of the hands, and you get the idea. Now I mentioned the quervians, which is a problem with the tendon of the thumb because uh, there's forearm muscles that move the thumb too and again you can work on the thumb side of the forearm and if the little fingers are numb work more on the little finger side of the forearm and notice I'm not I'm not pushing down, I'm just lifting my arm up as I move. So I'm not pushing them <laughs> the veins the wrong way. I'm just going back and forth or in a circle. And like I said, you don't have to be doing it for this long, but however long you've got, you know, five minutes, whatever. And how long will it take eventually? You know, a person who's a rock climber and is gripping all the time has different forearm muscles than a person who types and a person who uses a jackhammer has got a different you know set of muscles than someone who plays the guitar so it's all variable and uh, if you're gripping weights I've got a section on weights because a lot of people uh, grip those barbells when they don't need to because it doesn't help with the biceps it, just makes your forearm muscles tighter. In the second section I've got a whole bunch of different stretches and in my opinion you get much faster results by doing massage and I tell why in the second section on about stretching but I've got a whole bunch there so you can pick and choose from those and I'll only give you one stretch here and this is a uh, one that it really opens up the carpal tunnel and stretches out that carpal tunnel ligament and just have your palm facing your legs and pull back and you want to feel a good stretch there but you never want to force a stretch you only want to stretch to the edge of comfort you never want to go beyond that edge because you can break something or rip something or tear something and that's not a good thing I'm going to show you something that physical therapists use that's called tendon glides and if you had a choice of what to do with your time whether to do massage or stretching or tendon glides 
I would do the massage first because that's where you get the biggest bang for the buck and you may even get more bang for the buck stretching than doing the tendon glides but it just all depends on what you do with your hands because people have similar symptoms for different reasons. The purpose of the tendon glides is to keep the tendons moving freely through the carpal tunnel and as I mentioned in an earlier video the tendons go through a hollow tube called a sheath. There's nine flexor tendons and flexors are the ones that close your fists as opposed to the extensors which open them. As I mentioned in a previous video those tendon sheaths can get gunked up. If the fluid in there, the synovial fluid dries out and you keep on doing whatever you're doing with your fingers and pieces of tendon slough off or pieces of the sheath slough off that accumulates in there and causes swelling and irritation and so forth. Again, read what I wrote about why not anti-inflammatory drugs in section 2 and also the section on icing as, as well. Those are both written reports. But anyway, these are tendon glides and there's many variations of them. And you want to start off with your hand the back of your hand and the forearm in a straight line. That's the open hand position. And you don't want to have your palm forward or back. You want it in a neutral position. It doesn't matter if your arm's down or up or whatever. It doesn't matter if you're sitting or standing. But the first position is tabletop, then you have a hook, then a flat fist, and a closed fist. So basically, you're going from one position to another and the easiest one I think to remember is just going from this technique that I'll show you now going from the open hand tabletop slowly you want to actually do these pretty slow a lot slower than what I just did and just slowly repeat those maybe about five times on each one and then go f down to hook and the idea is to loosen up all those tendons and you kind of want to do all of them because different tendons do different things for the fingers you can go tabletop flat fist Close fist. Like I said, about five times on each one. And then you want to do the thumb. You get the idea on those. So, thumb close, thumb open. And, you know, if any one of these you can, if you need to, you can use your other hand to help you. You just don't want to force anything. Forcing is never a good idea in most cases. And those are basically tendon glides.